came across a, <clears throat> a cartoon uh, not too long back. I think it was it came out a while back, though. But it was a, it's a cartoon, and in it, there's this um, donut shop owner who is reading a policeman his rights. And this is what he says in the cartoon. It says, you have the right to a glazed donut and a cup of coffee. And if you cannot afford a glazed donut and a cup of coffee, a glazed donut and a cup of coffee will be provided for you. Kind of reminds you something, doesn't it? It kind of reminded me of something when I found out that tomorrow is an anniversary. Not ours. So that's... that's <laughs> you're not forgetting anything. And I'm not remembering something that wasn't happening either. So, um, but uh, it's the 50th anniversary tomorrow. Guess what? Of the Miranda rights. 50 years ago is when the U.S. Supreme Court said that People, suspects needed to be read their rights uh, before they were questioned. And most of us have probably, um, probably even have the, the, uh, the Miranda rights down, memorized, because ever since the 1960s, every cop show, you know, that, was, uh, that, that you've seen or the, the law and orders since, um, uh, they have it. I mean, there it is, the Miranda rights. And uh, so what are they? You have the right to remain. Everything you say can and be used against you in a court of law, which I never quite, I never quite understood. Um, you know, after hearing that, isn't that the call to keep your mouth shut? I mean, isn't that what it is? And the, but I guess you don't have an hour-long show if people kept their mouth shut. So uh, they never seem to be able to do that. And uh, uh, actually, this, you know, the, as this Miranda rights thing in 1966 and June 13th, you can celebrate that tomorrow. Um, uh, but this, this whole idea of the, of the Miranda rights is, is this, is not everyone seems to, uh, uh, who knows their rights, are really able to, to keep them. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie uh, Shrek 2. Has anybody ever seen that? Okay, all right, well, good, good. Well, you, you may remember the donkey then, at a particular point in the movie, saying this, saying, what about the Miranda rights? You are supposed to say you have the right to remain silent, and nobody said that I have the right to remain silent. To which Shrek responds, donkey, you have the right to remain silent. What you lack is the capacity Some of us, I've been there, done that, mm -hmm. uh, and perhaps we all have, maybe we've known others. So Miranda writes, though, they are important. They're very important. But what about this other thing, this, this, this thing that we hear about in, in Scripture, this thing that seems to be closely related, this whole issue of righteousness? Or some have said, be right relationship defined it in that way. Being in right relationship with God. Well, rights and righteousness are not quite the same uh, thing. And so in his letter to the uh, Galatians, uh, Paul is writing, he says this, he says, we know that a person is justified not by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. And so in Paul's eyes, to be justified, that is to be in right relationship, that is to be righteous, is to be considered, how might we say, is to be considered cool with God. And so, God, we cool, and the message comes back, yeah, we're cool. But we're cool, not because of anything we did, not because of anything we didn't do, not because of something there that we did to get us on God's good side. It's not about us. And it's not about what we did. It's not about what we didn't do. It is about what God has done. And, you know, Galatians is all about grace. 
It's all about grace. It's about that new way of being in relationship to God. So over the past 50 years, there has been a lot of talk, a lot of good talk, a lot of action that has been taken concerning rights. And we know those, and we lift them up. There's civil rights, there's women's rights, there's children's rights, there's victims' rights, there's criminal rights, there's a lot of good rights. But here, Paul is much more interested in that other thing, that righteousness, than he is in just rights. And he wants to teach us how to be square with God so that not only can we be good with God, but we can be in right relationship with our neighbors, with our family, with those who are around us that we may not even know yet and how we may be in right relationship. And surprisingly, he does not link righteousness to the things that we do. He doesn't link righteousness to, here, the works of the law. Instead, he connects it to what is our faith, our, our trust in Christ. What does he say? He says uh, in verse 16, a person is justified not by the works of the law, not by what you have done to put yourself into this wonderful right relationship with God, but through faith in Jesus Christ is what he argues. Now, folks, that was a pretty radical concept in the first century. Sometimes that seems to be a little radical concept in the 21st century, too. And it was especially a really, really big radical idea to the Jewish community that had grown up assuming that they remained right with God as long as they did good things in accordance with the law. Good works in accordance with the law. Do good works and you'll be in right relationship. I'll be in right relationship with Janet if I do good things for her. But you know what? I'll be in right relationship with Janet even if I didn't. Because of love. Say, she's saying yes, that's true. So that's what it was for them. It was different. It was something that these Galatians, that they, when they were hearing this, um, after some had come in there and said, no, in order to be right with God, you must be about doing the works of the law. And Paul says, no. It is simply enough to have this faith, this trust in Christ. That's enough. That's enough to get you in line with God, to be in that right relationship with, with God. And you know, when you, when you hear Paul's words like that, it really, for me anyway, it does not take long to give a one big shh. Thanks. Thanks that it's not up to me to have to do that. Because I know when I take a, a really a completely honest look at my own ability and my own efforts, I know that, you know what, I fall short all the time. I fall short in relationships. You fall short in things. That we can never do enough good works to be completely in that place, as Scripture says, as righteous. In that right relationship with God. We need help. That's all right. Because fortunately, it is God who offers us that kind of assistance through this wonderful love gift of Christ. Getting right with God, or being right with God. What Paul calls, and he uses the word justification, all it is is setting, setting it right again. It comes to us as a gift. It is a love gift from the God who loves us and wants to be in that right relationship with us. And part of being in that right relationship with us then helps us to be in right relationship with others. If we are living under grace, then we may offer grace to others. In a sense, you might say God kind of reads us our rights. 
you know, kind of, you have the right to be judged by what you say and by what you do. And anything that you say or do may be used against you in the divine court of law. But, if you need a savior, one will be provided for you. And is. For the good news, having a savior provided for us key to being in that sense of being in a right relationship with God is that trust, that faith in Jesus who loves us, brings us salvation, offers us a new way of living. Now, there is one more thing. Whenever you read this particular passage, this is a little theology. Alan knows about this. There's a twist that actually occurs here that, you, that is hard to pick up on in English. There's a twist that occurs in, in, in Greek. And all this talk about faith in Christ, the original Greek in the New Testament can actually be translated in one of two ways. Either a person is justified, that is made right, through faith in Jesus Christ, or a person is justified through the faith of Jesus Christ. The words in and of are the same in the translation here in Greek. And it all depends. Some versions, some translations you can get, and it will read one thing, some it will read another. One emphasizes that faith in Jesus. One of them emphasizes the faith of Jesus, which is correct. Well, I'm here to think maybe perhaps both. Both are important because it is important to have that trust in Christ. But it is also important to understand that it is the power of the faith of Jesus. It is a two-way street, as all relationships really are. It is God coming to us in Christ, and it is our sharing in that relationship with God and then, therefore, with others. See, in Greek, both of those meanings are, are always there. In English, it's, it's not, and the translators have to, have to choose one or the other, and I think I keep hitting this thing. It's kind of a shame, really, because both meanings are there, and they are correct, and they are both critically important. What's the key to our right relationship, you may ask? Well, it is the faith of Jesus. How do we receive that wonderful gift? Through our faith in Jesus. And we receive it. Both are needed in order to be made right with God, to experience that healthy relationship with God, and therefore to also to uh, example that healthy relationship in our own relationships in the world. Now, Paul is convinced that all of this whole thing is about is, is a gift. It is a grace gift. It is not earned. It is simply given. And this is what he says. He says in his words, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And he says, in the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. Paul's old life, that is trying to find a way to do all the good things necessary to be right with God, he considers to be dead. And now this new life, which is simply this acceptance, this trust in what is the grace, the love of God, that's new for him. That is life for him. Old life dead, new life has become a reality. And even Paul's faith comes to him as a gift from this living Christ who now lives, as he looks at it, within him. Faith of Christ, our faith in Christ, both are wonderful love gifts of God. Starting ending in God, gifts of faith that we can find incredibly enriching 
not only in our church, but incredibly enriching in all of our relationships.